hello everyone i hope you are all doing fine at home uh, i hope you are studying physics so welcome to the second lecture of physics of your science subject my name is bibin abram let's get started all right so in the previous class we talked about what actually physics is and i hope you understood it well so today we will talk we will start our first chapter the name of our first chapter is motion all right i'm sure all of you might have some idea of what motion is right so uh, when we look outside we see the birds flying from one place to another place right that is motion we uh, when we wake up in the morning right so when we see the ceiling the fan is moving so that is your motion yes or no so right now i am trying to i'm i'm waving my hands in air in order to explain you while i'm recording this audio so the, and my hands are also doing motion right so the blood is flowing inside your veins arteries and veins so there also motion is happening right the atoms the molecules you see the stars moving you see the earth moving you see the sun rising sun setting right so these all things are motion so let me try to understand motion by giving you a definition I, and let's see if that definition do justice to what motion is all right so what is motion if a body is changing its position with respect to time then the body is exhibiting motion i'm repeat i'm reading it again if a body is changing its position with respect to time then the body is exhibiting motion all right so here i have a cartoon character uh, i would like to name this cartoon character now i don't know the name of all of you so i am just randomly named this cartoon character as ramu ramu is very uh, very funny word so uh, so this boy's name is ramu let let's assume his name is ramu all right so ramu is at point a at t is equals to 0 and there is a point b at t is equals to 3 second right so ramu is moving from point a to point b that is from from t is equals to 0 to t is equals to 3 second so if we look at the definition if a body is changing its position ramu is changing its position with respect to time so ramu is exhibiting motion i hope this is clear right you can see ramu is moving from point a to point b point a where time is 0 point b where time is 3 seconds so ramu is exhibiting motion but is it that simple i would like to ask you one question does the wind also exhibit motion wind is something which you cannot see but can you say wind is exhibiting motion yes wind is also exhibiting motion uh, now how will we observe that we see wind accompany lot of dust particles and we see dust particles moving from that we can say that wind also exhibit motion now motion is a little bit complicated term there are lot it's a relative term right let's say you and your friends are are coming to school via bus right so you and your friends are sitting in the bus sitting inside the bus so when you see your friends inside the bus they are not moving at all yes or no but when you look outside the window you see outside the window of the bus everything is moving right but let's say there is an observer outside the bus right so when this observer sees you now you are not moving according to you, you are not moving inside the bus but the bus is moving right so when then outside observer sees you he sees that you are moving but on the other hand you are not moving so it's a relative term motion is a relative term so there we don't have to go but i am just i just gave you an example so that you can get the you know seriousness of the topic right motion is a relative term but for time being you have to understand that if a body is changing its position with respect to time that the body is exhibiting motion i hope this is clear all right describing motion now if you want to describe a motion the first and the foremost thing that comes is you have to specify a reference point you have to specify a reference point right let's say 
uh, okay so bef bef in order to explain that uh, let's read this out in order to describe a motion first we have to specify a reference point now what is reference point reference point is that point through which we have started measuring right let's say again at t is equal to 0 a point and at t is equal to 3 second b point i have ramu and ramu is going from point a to point b what is the reference point here ramu has traveled from point a to point b yes the reference point is the point a from where ramu has started right so if let's say if you tell if you if you tell your friend that uh, from your school to your home from your school to your home uh, the distance between these two quantities is let's say uh, you you say to your friend the distance between my home and my school is one kilometer right and let's say uh, your next friend also say the distance between my home and and the school is two kilometer both of you are correct here but again here the reference point is school because from school you are measuring your distance yes or no so reference point is very important for you to describe the motion right so let's say you come yours your home is one kilometer away but your friend's home is two kilometer away both are saying the right thing but the reference point is same for both the point but here the difference is that you are coming from a closer by region and the other friend is coming from a longer by region. the reference point is school right in the same way in this example also you can see a is your reference point i hope this is clear reference point is that point through which we have start we, we start measuring right i hope that is clear all right let's move forward distance and displacement very important topic now uh, before explaining this topic i would like to give uh, i will i will I will give you two cases you have to bear with me and I will explain it all right okay distance now I have a scale from 0 to 50 kilometer I have a scale right now here I have Ramu now Ramu you can see O C B A these are the markings these are the marking points right now now Ramu wants to go from O to C right there are a lot of ways by which he can do that right so what ramu decide ramu decides that he will he will first go to point a and then he will come back to point c this is how ramu wants to travel right ramu first went from point o to point a then he went from then he came back from point a to point c and finally he reached the point c right so my first question is what is the distance traveled by ramu total distance traveled by ramu is o a and then he came back from a to c yes or no so total distance traveled by ramu is from o to a it is 50 kilometer from a to c it is 40 kilometer yes or no right so the total distance traveled by ramu is 90 kilometer fair enough it is very understandable yes or no okay now let's look at the displacement part again i have a scale from 0 to 50 kilometer i have ramu ramu did the same thing he first went he went first went to point a then he comes back to point c finally he has reached the point c now this time what is displacement so displacement this is how you measure displacement you first see the initial point initial point means i'm talking about the reference point okay now reference point is also known as origin keep that in mind reference point is also known as origin from where you start measuring all right so your initial point in this particular example is point o and the final point where you have reached is your point c displacement is measured as your final point minus your initial point final point is point c minus your initial point that is zero right so you can see final point is at 10 kilometer initial point is at zero kilometer displacement is 10 kilometer from o to c now distance is coming out to be 10 90 kilometer but displacement is coming out to be 10 kilometer right now what is this different things now you have to understand that distance is a scalar quantity distance is a scalar quantity now what is scalar and what is vector quantity? there are two terms one is scalar vector i'll come to that term but 
uh, I will come to the what is this what is uh, scalar quantity what is vector quantity but here you have to understand displacement means the shortest distance between any two point any two initial and final point right R uh, Ramu wants to go from O to C now he can go from O to C in any possible way he can go from O to B then he can come to B to C or he can uh, or the path that he traveled that he went from O to A and then he went from from A to C now distance let me try to explain it uh, distance is how much ground an object has covered during its motion now in the first case he traveled from O to a that is 50 km then from o, A to C he travel that is 40 90 km he has traveled in total that is your distance that is your individual choice right on the other hand displacement means overall change in position right initially he was at point C if I go back to the slide initially he was at point O and finally he is at he is displaced to point C right so displacement means displacement means overall change in its position or the shortest dis distance between any two point see uh, we were talking about displacement is a vector quantity vector quantity means a quantity which has magnitude as well as direction right okay let me give you an example of distance and displacement let's say let's say you want to reach uh, let's say your friend's home is one kilometer north all right your friend's home is one kilometer north right uh, but you know you travel you tr you you take a taxi you take a cab and the cab person takes a long route and he you know he travel he takes uh, let's say he travel a distance of uh, three kilometer and reach to your friend's home right now the distance that he traveled is three kilometer but the displacement is simply one kilometer north the shortest distance between any two point that is your display no matter how much you have traveled in displacement we will always talk about initial and final points I hope that is clear see distance will not come with direction so if I say if I say that uh, I have traveled 10 km now here I haven't specified any direction I can I can travel in north direction I can travel in south direction I can travel in west or east I haven't you know specify the direction right or I can be traveling in circles you know 10 km all I can say is I have traveled a 10 km distance on the other hand displacement means distance with direction I will I if I say that my friend's house is one kilometer north this means I'm saying that if you want to reach my friend's house you have to travel north one kilometer very straightforward answer see in this example also you can see I wanted to reach from O to point C yes or no so displacement is point C minus point one see you have to travel 10 kilometer from O to C that is a displacement the shortest dis the shortest distance through which we can reach the point C that is what displacement is I hope this is clear in distance you will never see simply in the previous example of distance you can say I have traveled 90 kilometer but 90 kilometer travel karke aap kaha pohche? point C pe jo aap aram se 10 kilometer travel kare pohch sakte the right so displacement tells you that how that it, it, it will give you distance with direction right you have traveled you have traveled uh, 10 kilometer from point O to see right now I hope this is clear distance is a you know scalar quantity scalar quantity means which only have magnitude which only has value displacement has value as well as direction that's why it is a you know vector quantity I hope this is clear displacement means final position minus initial position so let me try to uh, make a difference between distance and displacement distance means the actual the total area the total length you have traveled that is your distance on the other hand displacement means the shortest distance between any two point right all right distance is scalar quantity is that distance is uh, distance is value that means 90 kilometer you have traveled on the other displacement is a vector quantity that means it also comes with direction in which direction you have traveled 
now again i'm telling you if if you say that your friend's home is 1 km north and so, so distance is up to you how much you travel your cab driver will take you a long route and he would have take a, he would have travel 3 km to reach your friend's place so that is a distance now i'm saying only 1 km to travel north you will reach at that particular point right so displacement is a much better term displacement gives you more information about a particular point i hope that is clear distance cannot be zero so distance can never be zero why i am saying distance cannot be zero see if i travel from a to point b i'm sure you must have travel some meter some length right on the other hand displacement can be zero let's say you are moving in a circular motion let's say you start at point b and re again come back to at point a doing a circular motion how much you have displaced your initial point your initial position and final position is same so displacement can be zero right displacement can be zero but distance cannot be zero displacement can be zero when your initial and final point are same right let's say you travel in a straight line and you come back at the same position your displacement is zero i hope see simply displacement mean how much you have displaced from your initial point simply try to understand how much you have displaced from your initial point if in a circular motion you have you was you are at point a then after moving a circular point again you are back at point a how much you have displaced no you haven't displaced at all you are back at point a right if but i'm sure you must have traveled how you know let's say uh, 10 meter 30 meter whatever it is but displacement is zero i hope this is clear all right now motion can be of two types one is uniform motion another one is non uniform motion let me try to explain what is uniform motion uniform motion if a body travels equal distances in equal interval of time then that kind of motion is known as your uh, uniform motion let's say for one second for for your first second you travel 5 meter for your second second you travel next 5 meter third second you travel next 5 meter so this kind of motion that is you are traveling 5 meter at every second this kind of motion is uniform motion that you are traveling equal intervals of distances and equal intervals of time i hope this is clear non uniform motion is the normal motion that we travel see let's imagine uh, you are riding uh, you are riding your bicycle so in the traffic you have to slow it down you have to stop right and then the traffic gets okay you have to move right so normal so if a body travels unequal distances that means your distances let's say for your for your two for for your first two seconds you travel 1 meter for your next two seconds you travel 3 meter now this kind of motion the unequal distances in equal in equal interval of time this kind of motion is what you call as your non uniform motion simple example is when uh, uh, when we are riding a bicycle right so in the traffic you have to slow it down right so you cannot have equal you know distances in equal interval of time so that kind of motion is your non uniform motion normally all our motions are non uniform you can make your motions uniform motion right but normally the you know all the road movement the car moving the bike moving the you know right bicycle moving all those motions are non uniform in nature i hope that is clear all right so you can see it here uh, <laughs> there is a rate uh, you can see uh, there is a baller so there you can see uh, ball by ball kilometer per hour they are telling the speed of the ball the first ball was 125 kilometer per hour then another second ball was again 125 kilometer per hour then the third ball was 140 kilometer faster ball right then the fourth ball was 142 kilometer per hour this kind of description you must have seen in your cricket match right uh, in the cricket match in the tables uh, in 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 the score card uh, uh, along with the score card this kind of information information also tell this tells that the what is the speed of the baller by how much speed the baller uh, you know it, the baller is throwing the ball right so what is this the speed right now speed can be for uniform motion and can be for non uniform motion now what is speed uh, we say uh, in our whenever we ride uh, whenever we are with with our dads you know riding 
we are not riding but our dads are riding uh, the motorcycle we see the speedometer the speedometer tells you how fast you are moving right there it is written 40 km per hour 50 km per hour you are moving right so it tells you the speed how much distance you are traveling in per unit time that is what it tells you that means rate of motion how fast you are moving see uh, let's say you and your friend uh, you both are neighbors let's say right and you are and both come come by bicycle now both of you you know one reaches the school in 10 minutes the another one reaches the school by 5 minutes so what does that mean the person who is reaching the school by 10 minutes is moving the bicycle with a slower speed as compared to the person who is reaching the school in 5 minutes yes or no so speed tells you how fast you are moving the rate of motion distance traveled per unit time there's a very simple formula for it speed is simply given as how much distance you have traveled in how much time right and the si unit of your speed is meter per second sometimes we use centimeter per second or kilometer per hour normally our speedometers tell us kilometer per hour how much kilometer we can travel in per hour right i hope this is clear uh, now there is something called known as average speed average speed is used for non uniform motion normal speed is used for uniform motion uniform motion that means you are traveling equal intervals in equal amount of time right let's say let me give an example of normal speed uh, let's say uh, you reach you you are you are at a cons you you travel a distance of 20 kilometers by your bicycle in let's say 1 hour right so your speed is distance is how much 20 km time is 1 hour speed is 20 km per hour i hope that is clear okay now for average speed is used for non uniform motion see when you cannot maintain your uniformity that means in one second you are traveling 2 meter in another second you are traveling 3 meter in next second you are traveling 1 meter so your there is a discontinuity of you know values at that particular time we have to take average speed so for every instant we have to add it right so average speed is given as total distance traveled divided by the total time taken for the for the journey now let let us do an example in order to explain in order to understand it more now question is an object travels 16 meter in 4 second all right and then another 16 meter in 2 second so the object is traveling the object travels 60 meter in 4 seconds. First 4 seconds 60 meter travel hota hai, and then another 4 second, uh, another 2 seconds 60 meter is again travel. So they are asking what is the average speed. So first we have to calculate total distance travel and then second we have to calculate total time taken and then we have to divide it. We will find the average speed. Alright. Total distance travel by the object is 16 meter and 60 meter. Yes or no? Total is 32 meter. And total time taken is first in order to travel the first 60 meter it took 4 second in order to travel this next 60 meter it took 2 second total time taken is 6 second average speed is total distance traveled divided by total time taken yes or no right simply you can write 32 meter divided by 6 second that is 5.33 meter per second now you have to be very careful here you have to be careful of the units we are using here we are using meter and second that's why the answer is in meter meter per second if we are using kilometers the answer should be in kilometer per hour right so you have to you, you should be knowing the conversion formulas i hope this is clear so therefore the average speed of the object is 5.33 meter per second i hope this is clear right so now the questions that you have to do for homework so these are the questions you can pause the video do this question this question an object has moved through a distance can it have zero displacement if you support uh, if yes support your answer with an example you have to do it by yourself a farmer moves along a boundary of a square field of sight 10 meter in 40 second what will be the displacement of the farmer at the end of 2 minute 20 second uh, all right you have to do it from his final position you have to do it which of the following is true for displacement it cannot be zero 
its magnitude is greater than the distance traveled by the object you have to think about it you will definitely will be able to find it if a body travels 10 meter in 3 second 20 meter in 4 second and another 10 meter in 2 second what is the average speed of the object these are very simple questions you have to do it as your homework and see i have, I have I, throughout my presentation i have given you terms i have given you definitions do write them in your copies as your class notes i hope you understood the lecture and uh, if you have any doubt related to the topics that we have discussed in this video you can comment in the comment section and i will try to answer them and that's all for today's class thank you and have a nice day